let's understand what vectors are in physics first of all and do that we will start our vector analysis so we will see that physical quantities some of you students especially from tp bhatia have attended one more lecture before so be familiar with few of the things but anyway so we will see that all physical quantities they are divided into two categories in physics or at this stage in physics we divided them into two categories scalars or scalar quantities and vectors or vector quantities now scalar quantities are quantities which have okay, so these quantities scalars they are defined by only magnitude so scalar quantities are defined by their magnitudes only so magnitude ka matlab kya hota hai it is just an amount of that physical quantity you know so for example if we talk about mass okay you might define the mass of a body let's say m1 as 5 kg or if we talk about volume we might define the volume of an object as v equal to 20 ml or the volume of liquid as so it is just defined as a magnitude or as an amount or magnitude ko hum kaise define karte hain as a number multiplied by a standard value of that quantity which is called a unit so just a number multiplied by a unit shows us the quantity or the magnitude of that that quantity which is the scalar quantity and that is what defines it okay but on the other hand vector quantities kaise hote hain vectors are quantities okay which are defined by both magnitude and direction they they have a particular direction in which they act so just the magnitude is not enough we need to define the direction in which they are acting so vectors are quantities that are defined by their direction and their magnitude if the information about direction is missing then the information about a vector is not complete so for example we will say that a displacement suppose we are talking about displacement then we will define the displacement of a body s let's say as 10 km towards north if i don't tell what is the direction of the displacement then it is incomplete if i say that the displacement is just equal to 10 km then it is incomplete because i don't know what about the direction okay so we can see that this is an incomplete definition of displacement this is the complete definition of displacement because this is not giving the direction okay there is no information no info or no information on the direction so that means it is a incomplete definition okay so this this becomes this is not useful for us anymore okay this is incomplete It's an incomplete measurement of the displacement, whereas this is a complete me measurement because it's giving you the magnitude as well as the direction. Okay, it's giving us the two properties, which are the magnitude and the direction. Now, as we do more vector analysis or uh, we learn more about vector quantities, we'll realize that the direction is not important. Why? Okay, whereas in the case of scalars. Firstly, there is no direction, and secondly, there is no need to define direction. The quantity as I have, if I just defining the magnitude, it is enough for us to define the quantity. But in the case of the vector, if I just know the magnitude, it is not enough to know the full information about the quantity. You know, that is half information, or that is incomplete information. The information of direction is equally important as the information about magnitude. Okay? So this is the difference between scalar and vector quantity. So if you like, you can just make a short note of this. so what are vectors they are a category of physical quantities in physics all physical quantities what are physical quantities they are quantities that can be measured so anything that can be measured is called a physical quantity so on the basis of my quantity ko kaise measure karta hu do i measure it by just a magnitude or an amount or do i measure it or do i express it in terms of an amount acting in a certain direction so do i define it in terms of direction and magnitude अगर डायरेक्शन एंड मैग्नेट्यूड के टर्म्स में डिफाइन करते हैं देन वी कॉल दैट क्वांटिटी अ वेक्टर क्वांटिटी वेयर इज इफ इट्स ओनली इन टर्म्स ऑफ मैग्नेट्यूड वी कॉल दैट क्वांटिटी अ स्केलर क्वांटिटी ओके 
so this is the first aspect about vectors understanding the classification of um, physical quantities into vectors and scalars okay, so hope this is clear to all of you Now let's understand to an example. Very good. Okay, good yes. So let's understand to an example. The magnitude is a direction Q important. Let's let's try and understand this thing next. Okay. So why is it important to know the direction of a vector? Whereas in the case of scalar, there's no such thing as direction. Okay. So let's take an example here. So an example in one case, what I'm doing is that okay, 20 milliliters of water are added to 30 milliliters of something else. Let's say, you know, we have oil in a jar. And we want to find the total volume of liquid mixture. So that's case one. And another case, what we say is that, yes, correct. That is 50 milliliters, that's correct. Okay. Now in case two, we are saying that a body, like a block or something, lies on a smooth surface. Now, two forces, F1 equal to 30 Newtons and F2 equal to 40 Newtons act simultaneously. On it. Tangential to the surface. Or let me just say this very simply. Horizontally. On it. Okay. What is the net force? At work? Okay. So let's let's understand this question in a little bit more detail. So in the first case, you can see it's very simple. We will just say that. The net volume will become the volume of water plus the volume of oil. So we know that it is 30 plus 20. As long as the same unit same unit express I just write it as the, like the addition of numbers, like we do algebraically. So, so net volume is this much. But in the second case, what can I say about the net force? Yes, I would like to see what you people are saying about it. Okay. Okay, so Sagar, you have claimed that the net force is 10 newtons when I'm applying two forces of 30 and 40. But can I be sure that it will always be 10 newtons? Ah, now, Tej, you are saying it is 10 or 70. Okay, I, yeah, very good. So, Kunal, you have picked up the reason. Yeah, we don't know how much the net force is. We don't. Okay, we cannot say that. We cannot find this. Why we cannot find it? Because we have no information. Very good. Okay. We have no info about direction. Okay. So, for example, suppose I had this situation. Suppose I had the situation that this block which is lying on a horizontal surface, which is smooth. is block pay. Suppose many essay one. Suppose like let's say case E is like this that one force is acting like this and the second force is also acting like this. So F1 which was 30 newtons is acting like this F2 which is 40 newtons. Now in this case assuming the forces are in same direction. 
मतलब एक अगर ईस्ट के तरफ है तो दूसरा भी ईस्ट के तरफ है एक अगर नॉर्थ के तरफ है दूसरा भी नॉर्थ के तरफ है देन वी कैन से दैट ओके द नेट फोर्स इज बिकमिंग 70 मीटर्स बट दिस इज एन अजम्पशन दिस इज एन अजम्पशन दिस इज नॉट गिवन इन द क्वेश्चन सो इज इट अ वैलिड अजम्पशन यू डोंट नो बिकॉज़ नो इंफॉर्मेशन वाज गिवन इन द क्वेश्चन ओके नाउ सी टेक द सिचुएशन वेयर सपोज दे वर एक्टिंग इन ऑपोजिट डायरेक्शन like many of you have pointed out in that case my force would have been in which direction then uh, the net force will actually be opposite one of them and in the direction of the other one so agar aisa situation hai abhi that one force is acting like this and the other force is acting let's say like this then the net force will in fact become what it will become 40 uh, sorry it will become 10 बिकॉज ये फोर्स कितना था ये थर्टी न्यूटन था और ये फोर्स फोर्टी न्यूटन था नाउ इफ आई टेक दिस एजम्पन दैट हियर आई एम अज्यूमिंग एफ वन एंड एफ टू आर इन एग्जैक्टली ऑपोजिट डायरेक्शन exactly opposite directions in that case what will happen the net force will become 10 newtons correct and the net force in direction current will be in this direction so the body will in fact accelerate like this you know very good so assuming is like this so but again this is an assumption okay so we don't know if this assumption is true or not we don't know about this assumption we don't know if this is valid because no information was now think of an interesting thing ye main side se dekh raha hu na i am seeing this diagram from the side where so i am assuming that gravity is like this an acceleration due to gravity so i am assuming this is the vertical line okay. now imagine i am seeing this from top okay so imagine see the block from above so abhi block ka surface ye is the ceiling hai and this is the floor on which it is lying okay. now in this case there could be so many other situations also aisa bhi to ho sakta hai that one force is acting like this so my force of f1 is acting like this 30 newtons and my force of f2 is acting like this aisa bhi to ho sakta hai My force of F two, which is of forty newton. Suppose it is acting like this. Now, in this case, what about the net force? We have no idea right now. Only thing we can say is that definitely the net force will be less than seventy newtons. Okay, because why? You can see that they are not acting parallel. Why I know this because they are not parallel. तो इतना मैं बोल सकता हूं कि 70 तो नहीं होगा 70 से कम होगा कितना होगा आई कैन नॉट टेल ओके एंड सिमिलरली मैं इतना बोल सकता हूं कि 10 से तो ज्यादा होगा व्हाई बिकॉज़ दे आर नॉट ऑपोजिट दे आर नॉट ऑपोजिट सो द वर्स्ट केस सिचुएशन वुड बी इफ द फोर्स वाज अप्लाइड इन ऑपोजिट डायरेक्शंस बाय टू पीपल देन दे वुड टेंड टू बी अपोजिंग ईच अदर सो द नेट फोर्स वुड ओनली बी 40 30 10 एंड बेस्ट केस वुड बी दे वर एक्टिंग फ्रॉम द सेम डायरेक्शन पैरेलल So in that case, the best case scenario, the force would have been 70 newtons. Now in this diagram, you can see it is neither opposite nor it is parallel. So it is neither 70; it's less than 70, nor it is 10; it's more than 10. So this is the only thing I can say. Okay, if we assume that F1 and F2 are acting neither parallelly nor दोनों में से एक भी केस नहीं देन दिस इज द ओनली थिंग वी कैन सी वी कैन इवन से हाउ मच द फोर्स इज ओके सो दिस शोज यू द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दिस दिस एग्जांपल क्लियरली शोज यू द डिफरेंस बिटवीन अ क्वांटिटी वेयर आई डोंट नीड एनी देयर इज नो डायरेक्शन आई डोंट नीड इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट डायरेक्शन बस हियर यू कैन सी दिस थिंग इट्स अ इट्स एन ऑपरेशन व्हिच वी कॉल स्केलर एडिशन दिस काइंड ऑफ ऑपरेशन इज कॉल्ड स्केलर एडिशन नाउ व्हाई वी आर डूइंग स्केलर एडिशन बिकॉज़ वॉल्यूम is what kind of a 
volume is what kind of quantity it is a scalar quantity so scalar radiation kaise hota hai it is according to the normal principle of algebra understood the point there is vector quantities kaise add hote hai that is something we will now learn as of now we don't have any information about it. okay here we can see that we cannot combine this why because forces which are vector quantities will be added by the principles of vector addition और अभी के लिए हमारे हमारे लिए वेक्टर एडिशन क्या है इट इज अनोन क्वांटिटी क्या होता है हमें पता ही नहीं हां लॉजिकली हम इतना कह सकते हैं दैट ओके स्पेशल केस जब फोर्सेस पैरेलली एक्ट करते हैं सो द रिजल्टेंट विल बी द सम ऑफ देयर वेक्टर स्पेस स्पेशल केस जब फोर्सेस ऑपोजिट डायरेक्शन में ऐड करते हैं लाइक इन द सेकंड केस देन द रिजल्टेंट विल बिकम द डिफरेंस ऑफ देयर मैग्नीट्यूड्स बट जनरल केस में फोर्स कैसे ऐड करने का बिकॉज़ देयर इज सम जनरल एंगल थीटा बिटवीन देम लाइक दिस वी डोंट नो सो दैट इज व्हाट वी हैव टू लर्न सो so we understand clearly from this example that force is clearly a vector because it has direction and magnitude and what i mean by saying that it has direction along with magnitude iska kehne ka matlab kya hai that direction is important while taking into account algebra so whether i want to add two forces or later i'll see if i want to subtract two forces or any algebraic operation that we have to do for vectors it will involve the direction also. okay the magnitude jaden is is defined as the amount of the physical quantity okay the magnitude is defined as the amount the physical measurement of the amount is called the magnitude whereas direction is the direction in which the quantity acts sometimes we call the direction the line of action also the line along which the action of that quantity happens okay, so that is called direction whereas the amount of the measurement in terms of a standard unit is called the magnitude so when i say that the force is of magnitude 30 newtons means the force ka amount hai compared to a standard unit of 1 newton wo kitna times hai 30 times so it is 30 newtons okay so hope this point is clear to all of you now we start our study of vectors now that we have understood ki vectors hona zaruri kyu hai and how vectors are different from scalar quantities that they have magnitude and direction and therefore any kind of operation we do for vector quantities we need to incorporate the direction we need to take into account ki uska direction kya hai tabhi hum uske sath algebraic operation kar sakte so now we will learn how to do all these operations like vector addition etc okay yeah page uh, very interesting question what is what are tensors so first of all i will tell you tensors are not in our syllabus but okay. but tensors are a general category okay, of physical quantities okay. and they are actually divided into scalars vectors and higher order tensors so higher order tensors jo hote hain they are not in syllabus for us okay now they are quantities which are you can say they are neither vectors nor scalars so at at 11 plus 12 level we don't need to worry about tensor okay this is not in syllabus but we will see in in your engineering or in further studies you will see that there are certain quantities like for example when we define uh, this thing pressure inside a fluid okay we can define it as a quantity which is neither a vector nor a scalar okay but at our level when we talk about pressure in in fluid mechanics we will be treating it like a scalar ठीक है, so it's a little difficult for me to explain right now what is a higher order tensor. But by the time we complete vector algebra, I will be able to give you examples of what are higher order tensors and why they don't come in the category of vectors. And Didi, to answer your question, 
current can be treated as a higher order tensor, but in our study of physics, we will treat current as a scalar quantity. Okay. So, if somebody asks you as a class 11, 12 kind of student, what is electric current? It is a it is a scalar quantity, and the proof of that is very simple. Electric current. For example, you have a junction in some circuit, or here the current five amperes are, or here the current two amperes are, or here the current I three is is leaving the junction. Now you know that conservation of charge, conservation of charge will give you a very simple principle that the total incoming current here I one plus I two. Is equal to the total outgoing current. So that shows you that I3 over here will be 7 amperes. Now, see how I've done the calculation. It's independent of direction. This angle theta can be changed. Now, if I make the wires like this, okay, but I still keep this current as 5 amperes. I still keep this current as 2 amperes. Okay. But still, this I3 is the same. In both the cases is the same. So, current at our level will be treated like a like a scalar quantity because our understanding of current data will be limited to electrical circuits where it is flowing through wires. Okay, but yes, in higher physics, current has a more general connotation. For example, if we have let's say a solid block of metal, a solid block of metal, and this is a point to many batteries connect here, positive terminal say, or kiss or surface to yape, yeah, kiss corner to many negative terminal say connect here. Now this current that is flowing through the solid metallic block, how it will be flowing? It will not be in any particular direction along the length of a wire. It will be like a three-dimensional current and there its distribution is a little bit more complicated. So in those kind of situations, current might be treated as a higher order tensor and the mathematics of dealing with higher order tensors is more complicated. You might have heard of terms called matrices. The matrices are or, uh, you know, arrays of numbers that we write like this, E1, E2, E3. B1, B2, B3, and there is a algebra of matrices, like how we add two matrices, how we multiply matrices, etc. So that kind of algebra is used for tensors. But again, I'm saying that if you if you heard the term tensors in your general knowledge, it's very good. It's you heard about something nice, okay, and that expands your overall knowledge. But at at the moment, you need not worry about tensors. In fact, at the moment, you concentrate on learning about vectors, and by the time you have Full information and knowledge about vectors. I will explain you what tensors are. Okay, but it's a good thing that you have asked. So, as a background information, it's good that you know that as a big thing that there is something called higher order tensors, which are neither vectors nor scalars. They are more complicated quantities. Okay, and at some stage, I will give you some idea about. It. So, at the moment, our understanding of electric current is the current passing through wires in a circuit, and that type of current which is flowing along the length of a conductor. It's not a three-dimensional kind of current. That is always defined as a scalar quantity, or that can be treated as a scalar quantity, as can pressure also. Okay. Pressure can also be treated like a scalar quantity, even though generally speaking, pressure is a more uh, tensor like quantity. Okay. So, so again, repeating for the moment, we will think of physical quantities either as scalars or vectors. Or if there is confusion hota hai that a given quantity is a vector or a scalar, just ask yourself that how would you add that quantity? Like just now we were thinking about electric current. So I showed you the demonstration how we would add electric current in a circuit. Because that's the kind of situation in which we understand electric current. Electric current flows in a circuit through wires. So now if you think about adding currents in, in circuits, uh, you understand that the addition is just done like the addition of scalar quantity. It is what we call scalar addition. Okay, so that definitely we will be treating current as a scalar quantity. Okay, now coming back to vectors. The, the first uh, you know, important aspect about vectors is notation. What kind of notation we use for vectors versus scalars? How the notation is going to be different so that we can identify that a given quantity is a vector or a scalar. So it's then it means that we are defining the quantity capital A as a vector. Okay. So this will be read as vector quantity. Okay. So for example, we might say F is a force vector. 
और एस इज ए डिस्प्लेसमेंट वेक्टर The moment we use on small v, for example, it becomes speed, which is a scalar. But the moment we use v with the arrow on top of it, it becomes velocity, which is a vector. So likewise, if we use any any alphabet or any symbol, but without the arrow on top, then this is read as the scalar quantity. फर्स्ट एस्पेक्ट ठीक है कोई भी सिंबल या कोई भी अल्फाबेट ऊपर अगर हम एक वेक्टर एरो बनाते हैं एंड द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द एरो इज नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट द डायरेक्शन इज स्टैंडर्ड सो एनी एक्स वाई जेड सिंबल बट विद एन एरो ऑन टॉप ऑफ इट दिस बिकम्स द वेक्टर एक्स देयर इज एनी सिंबल विदाउट द एरो ऑन इट दैट बिकम्स स्केलर एक्स ठीक है Yeah, Tej, you can just check your internet connection once. Sometimes uh, due to you know dropouts in internet connectivity, if you get logged out or something, you can log back in. Yeah, so it could be better. But don't worry. As I told you, I'm recording the lecture, so you will get the. Uh, Recording of the session. If you miss any part because of rain or whatever, okay. So is is this clear to all of you? The notation part. Now the next thing in notation we have to understand. Next symbol is that if we put the vector symbol in between two bars like this, the same kind of symbol that we use for mod in max. This is read as magnitude. of the vector so for example if i say that mod f or magnitude of f is equal to 15 newtons so in words what does this statement means that the magnitude of the force f is 15 newtons so instead of You know, writing such a long line, we just use a small symbol. So any vector written in between two bars that is called the magnitude of that vector, okay. or let's say mod v is equal to 20 meters per second. So this again means that v has magnitude. The velocity v has magnitude of 20 meters per second. now one thing we should be mindful of over here is that if we write something like this that vector f is equal to 15 newtons then this is actually a wrong statement okay this is an incorrect statement or we can even call it an equation because we have got an equal to sign okay so it's an incorrect equation why because left hand side f is a vector quantity and right hand side 50 newtons is a magnitude only so magnitude is scalar okay so we cannot equate a vector with a scalar so that's why that statement is wrong so we cannot equate a vector with the scalar okay so we should modify this statement so this becomes a wrong statement okay if we want to say that the magnitude of the force is 15 newtons then we should not write it as f vector we should write it as f vector with two bars this is equal to 15 newtons this is a correct statement or if we want to say it like that we have to say that f is a force of 50 newtons 
acting towards let's say east so this is a correct statement because this is a vector quantity both magnitude and direction on this side of the equation we have got magnitude and direction and on that side of the equation we have got a vector so it's fine but in the earlier statement kya hua tha the problem was that on the left hand side we had a vector quantity and on the right hand side we had only a magnitude so equating a vector quantity with just a magnitude becomes a incorrect statement we have to express it like this that magnitude of the vector is this okay is this point clear yeah prathimesh if you have some doubt just message me don't worry about the mute button तो टेक्निकली हम कभी ऐसा इक्वेशन नहीं लिख सकते दैट अ वेक्टर क्वांटिटी इज इक्वल टू 50 न्यूटन यू ऑलवेज हैव टू राइट आइदर मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ द वेक्टर इज 50 न्यूटन और वी हैव टू एक्सप्रेस द वेक्टर इन सच अ वे दैट दोनों चीज के बारे में इनफॉर्म क्वेश्चन है दैट द मैग्नीट्यूड एज वेल एज द डायरेक्शन नाउ एज यू कैन सी कि अगर मैं ऐसा स्टेटमेंट लिखता हूं दैट मॉड एफ और मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ एफ इज 50 न्यूटन दिस स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट बट अगेन इट इज इनकंप्लीट it is only giving me magnitude it is not giving me information about the direction so next is we want to see how do i write a vector or how do i represent a vector jisme mujhe dono cheez ki information mile mujhe uska magnitude bhi pata ho aur uska direction bhi pata ho so representation of vectors that becomes the next thing nahi uh, kunal this is an important point over here magnitude of a vector cannot be a negative or a positive one it does not have algebraic sign Okay, so this is in fact you can add this point over here. Magnitude of a vector does not have algebraic sign. Okay, just like modulus. In maths also is like that. The modulus of plus two is two. Modulus of minus one is one. It just removes the sign. Okay. Very similarly, magnitude of a vector does not have algebraic sign. This is something that you should additionally write down. So this is an important point. Okay. All right. Now let's move on to the next thing. So. now we are coming to a very important aspect so representation earlier we were seeing notation that is what symbol that we use now we are seeing representation how do we represent a vector so representation of vectors so there are two different methods of representation that we will be studying the first method but before we write down let's understand any method used for representation must define both the magnitude and the direction okay. must define both the things of a vector if we are using some method to represent a vector which is giving information only of magnitude or only of direction then it is not a proper representation when will we say that our representation is proper when is giving information about both magnitude and direction okay. so now the first type of representation is called the geometrical representation So as the name suggests, in geometrical representation, what we do is we use geometry. Now, how can we use geometry to represent a quantity which has both magnitude and direction? So one easy way, for example, that geometrically we can always define 
the amount of a material or the amount of a quantity by a line because a line has a specific length for example when we draw bar graphs what we do we represent the amount of a quantity by representing it with a bar of a certain length so if quantity is double in magnitude to another then uska bar uska double length ka ho jayega so similarly we can represent length as a magnitude but here we have to represent not only the magnitude but direction also so how do we represent both magnitude and direction geometrically we make use of what is called a arrow so geometrically vectors are represented by what we call vector arrows so the geometrical representation of a vector is using an arrow so a vector is represented by drawing an arrow okay such that two things its length and the length of the arrow which is this length length is proportionate to its or to the vector's magnitude so the arrow's length is proportional to the vector's magnitude and the second thing is that the vector is pointing in a certain direction the arrow head is pointing in a certain direction so that represents the direction in which the vector quantity acts okay. so its direction that is the direction of the arrow's head okay. represents the vector's direction so also when we make an arrow like this we name this part of the vector this part of the drawing is called the head of the arrow head or tip of the arrow and this of the arrow where the arrow starts from that is called the origin or the tail and this symbol is called the head so arrow ka head jis taraf bhi point kar raha hai that direction represents the direction of the vector which is acting whereas arrow ka length jitna bhi hai that represents or that is proportional to the magnitude of the vector so just write down this definition of geometrical representation then with some more examples it will become clear to us okay so just write this down and it will become clear with some examples like you can write you know also
Yes, the, the that is correct. The the arrow that we put in top of the symbol, ये वाला arrow, this has nothing to do with the direction. Now we can represent different. For example, if the by this arrow, the vector E is represented by this one. The vector V is in some different direction. So उसका arrow ऐसा हो जाएगा. The vector C suppose is like this. The direction of the vectors and their lengths are representing the magnitudes. जिसका The the graph paper's own scale is suppose in inches, then you will use a representation where you know one inch represents uh, so much. Suppose you are representing forces, then one inch represents so many newtons. Or suppose you are representing volume in milliliters, then one inch represents five milliliters or something. On the other hand, if you are using a centimeter graph paper, then you will use a different thing. Okay, but here at the end of the day, our purpose is not to make exact diagrams. so we will actually not be uh, you know looking at scale and protractor and pencil and all that we will be just making rough diagrams to get an idea of how the geometry works then as far as calculation is concerned we will not be doing the calculations using any diagrams and graph paper and thing we we will be doing the calculations using the principles of geometry like trigonometry pythagoras theorem and these kind of things will be used for doing the calculations and as as you go along you'll understand more but anyhow let's look at couple of examples so that we get more idea about this so next we will look at a situation where i'm going to draw certain vectors and we can tell the relationship between them so suppose i have made my diagram assuming that this is the arrow pointing from south to north and this x axis of mine is the arrow pointing from west to east and this is north this is south now within this suppose i have made one vector which is like this i made another vector let's say like this and i made another vector which is like this now now the question is saying that if the vector e represents a displacement of 12 kilometers towards east and c are also displacements drawn to exact scale then express the magnitudes and direction Or B and C. So supposing I have 
gone through the trouble of making an exact diagram according to scheme. Okay, and in that diagram, the vector A represents this quantity. It represents a displacement of 12 kilometers towards east. Okay. And I have drawn B and C also using the same scale to exact measurements. Then just observe the arrows and from that try to tell that what is B and what is C. Very good, that is correct. Sagar, that is correct. Your answer for B is correct. No, it is a different a bit. Tej, be careful about the magnitude. See, if you look more closely in the diagram, you will probably understand. If I am defining this as one unit, I am defining this as one unit. See that E is magnitude. It is proportional to how many units? Three units. Oh, sorry, four units. Minus three. E is magnitude is proportional to four units. And E is magnitude is given to me that E is magnitude is 12 kilometers. So that is proportional to how much? Four units. That means one single unit is proportional to three kilometers. That means one unit represents three kilometers. Understood now? So now from observation in the diagram, you can see that this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Six units. So you can see from the diagram clearly now. And C you can see is one, two, three, four by one, two. So C is the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle like this. Just a minute. So C is like a hypotenuse So if this length is 4 units This length is also 4 units Then this length L prime let's say is how much? 4 root 2 units okay. So from all this you can see that so From this we can now observe that what is happening in this diagram is that B's arrow is 6 units long. Okay. So that means magnitude of B is how much? 18 kilometers. Because one unit was proportional to 3 kilometers. And similarly, you can see C's vector, C's vector arrow was 4 root 2 units in length. So that means magnitude of C is becoming 4 root 2 into 3, so 12 root 2 kilometers. Or you can say that is approximately 12 into 1.4 okay. So this is the magnitude of C and this is the magnitude of B. Okay. Now as far as direction is concerned, you can see that B is pointing north. It is therefore 18 kilometers towards 
See, this is the proper explanation. Because who who arrow they want to be that who is such a who arrow hypotenuse ke along. So, ye agar L hai aur ye agar B hai, to ye arrow ka length kitna hai? It is square root of L square plus B square plus that. That's why it is like. That. That's why it's four root. अच्छा स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ टू एटी एट यस यस बेटा दैट्स करेक्ट सागर या सागर स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ टू एटी एट इस करेक्ट नो यू नॉट अज्यूमिंग एनीथिंग बेटा दिस इज एन एक्सेक्ट थिंग ना सी द क्वेश्चन इज टेलिंग अस दैट इट इज ड्रॉन इन स्केल A represents 12 kilometers, okay, and B and C are also displacements drawn to exact scale. So first, I have to understand from the diagram what is the scale. So, minute 12 kilometers, को कितने units से represent किया है? One, two, three, four. So four units are representing 12 kilometers. That means one unit is proportional to how much? Three kilometers. Now the diagram is clearly showing me that these arrows is how many units long? It's six units long. so there's no assumption here it's an exact thing you know, because the question is instructing us that the diagram has been made exactly to to scale so malvika you understood the point we are going with what the question is saying hum apne taraf se koi assumption nahi kar rahe hai na yahan pe it is according to exactly what the question is saying understood now okay good theek hai But see, this was just to give you an idea. Now, from this point onwards, we will never draw diagrams which are so exact. We need not to do that. We do not 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 do that. so in the previous question find the angles between a and b b and c Yes. So, what is the angle between these? We have to find out. Okay. And I just quickly make the diagram again for you so that you remember. So, E was a vector towards east. Okay. Now I'm not drawing it necessarily to scale. I'm just making a rough diagram here. B was a vector which was towards north. Okay. And this was 18 kilometers. This was 12 kilometers. Okay. And C was a vector, which was towards 
southeast. So in southwest, okay, 45 degrees. So C was 12 root 2 kilometers. So now what is the angle between A and B and what is the angle between B and C? Yes, Sagar correct, Yash correct, Rachit correct. Yes, Rachit, your second answer is correct. Malvika correct. <clears throat> so see, sometimes it gets a little confusing how to get the angle between two vectors. So suppose I want to find the angle between A and B. So for the first part, for the angle between A and B, what I can do is I can pick up that vector arrow of A and draw it again over here. And in comparison, draw the arrow of B from the same origin. I've drawn the vector A also from the same origin, the vector B also from the same origin. So I can see that this angle is 90 degrees. Okay. So to turn from the direction of A to the direction of B, how much you have to turn by? You have to turn by 90 degrees. Okay. So therefore, the angle between A and B are at 90 degrees to each other. Now, someone might say that, okay, why is that 90? Why is that not 270? Okay. So actually, 90 is the same as 270. So any theta is the same as 360 minus theta. But we always use the smaller one of them. Now similarly, if we want to find the angle between B and C. We will draw the vector B towards north. But in comparison, how is the vector C? The vector C was towards southwest. So again, you can see uh, that This is 45 and this is the vector C, this is the vector B. So now the angle between them will take us which angle, we take us this angle. From B to turn towards C, how much I have to rotate by? So the angle B and C are at theta equal to how much? 90 plus 45 or 135 degrees. Now that 135 is also the same thing as this angle, which is how much? 225. Okay, but we express it as 135. So when we say the angle between two vectors, we always count the smaller angle. We don't take the larger angle. So 135 is equivalent to 225 but we will always take it as the smaller of the two okay. yes and the third answer is also the same you can see though the orientation is different but the angle between A and C is also the same because A is pointing towards east Vector E was 12 kilometers, but that's not the important. It was pointing towards east. Okay. And the vector C like this, let's say. It was pointing towards south west. So this angle is 45. So Abhi in dono ki beach kaun angle ho jayega? We'll take the smaller angle of the two. So this we'll take as theta. That's the same as this, but we'll take this as theta. So theta is equal to 135 degrees. Between E and C. Okay, is it clear? Okay, so you can just take this down if you like.
Okay, and the final one. Okay, let's work out one more question. Okay, so this time I'm not going with geographical direction. Instead, I'm just saying this is some arbitrary x, y axis. I don't know where north, south, east, west is. But now compared to that, let us say that one vector that I've drawn here is like this. Okay, this is the vector E. Where this angle is 60 degrees. Okay. And another vector that I've drawn is like this this is the vector b let's say where this angle is 60 degrees and another vector that i have drawn let us say Where this angle is 45 degrees. Okay. Now, no information is given about magnitudes, but here we have to just find the angle between again all these pairs. So, you can just start working on this. All three pairs, what is the angle? Still looking for the correct answer. Pay a lot of attention to where the arrows are pointing. Yes, Krish is correct. Okay, so let me tell you the answers here and then I will give the justification. Okay, the answer to part E should be 120 degrees. Okay, so far only two people have got that correct. The answer to part B, the angle between B and C will be 15 degrees. Okay, and the answer to part C, the angle between A and C will be 105 degrees. Now what will be confusing you is that B is drawn like this. But remember B ka jo direction hai pe, B ka jo direction hai, wo aisa hai. It's going in this direction. It's not going in this direction. It's not going from the origin like this. It's coming to the origin like this. So to properly understand the angle between A and B, what you can do is you can redraw the diagram. We can redraw the, draw the diagram in such a way that now we draw all the vectors from the origin. For example, for the first part, we want the angle between A and B. So let's pick up these two vectors A and B and draw them from the origin here. So my vector A is it is in this sort of direction. It's pointing at 60 degrees from the x-axis, going away from the origin like this. But now if you look at the vector B, in my diagram, when I draw it from the origin, how it should look. So for that, pay attention here. Okay.
See here, B is pointing in which direction? It's actually going along this line. So this should be the direction in which B acts. You understanding? Because B's arrow is like this, no? So I'll have to redraw the vector B and make it like this. When you do that, you realize that B ka jo direction hai, wo yahan se 60 hai. So the angle between A and B will become how much? It will become 120. Okay. Now likewise do the same thing for uh, the other pairs also. And you get the answer. Okay, so is 120 degrees clear to all of you? How we are getting between A and B now? So, this is a tricky, ho jata hai, but you have to be very careful when, when you are looking at vectors which are staggered like that. You have to redraw them from the common origin. Only then it works. Okay. So, again, now if you place the same diagram, if you place B and C, you will realize what's happening. So our vector B was pointing like this. There is our vector C. So C is with this angle 45 degrees. Whereas B is with this angle 60 degrees. So the angle between B and C ultimately becomes this one. This angle becomes between B and C. Now we can say that sixty minus forty five or theta equal to fifteen degrees. Uh, Tej, you can just send me the message for whatever question you have. And similarly, in the same diagram, E is over here. So, E angle 60. You can see that E and C are at 
सिक्सटी प्लस फोर्टी फाइव और हंड्रेड एंड फाइव डिग्रीज Between A and B, what is the angle? Yeah. Between A and B, this is the angle. Now, ये A का direction है देखो, ये B का direction है. So this total angle, this becomes the angle between them. So A and B are at theta equal to sixty plus sixty, or theta equal to one twenty degrees with respect to. But Tej, it is not possible uh, for you to unmute the students here. Okay. You can just send me whatever question you have on the text message. I'll help you out. Okay, very good. So they just made one point correct over here. Okay. They go. How the angle has angle has not changed, brother. That's the thing you have to understand. So when I bring down the vector b, you know, how come that angle remains sixty? So just just pay attention to this diagram I'm drawing on the side here. You will understand what I'm saying. देखो यहाँ पे there was the vector b it was along this line which is making sixty degrees with this axis so the arrow b was like this so pay lot of attention here over okay. vector b was like this now when I place b over here it's along that same line now. is a continuation of that same line okay. it's just i'm replacing it but it's along that same line okay. so no angle has changed beta e angle 60 is therefore e angle 60 No position has changed, better. It is just that B was earlier drawn from here. Now the same thing has been transported here, but its length is the same and its direction is the same. So it's the same vector. This vector is equal to this. What is understood now? The vector has nothing to do with the position of the tail and the head. it is only to do with two things the length and the direction okay so a vector arrow can be moved okay to any position without changing its length that is the magnitude or turning its direction so it makes no difference to the vector whatsoever so for whatever confusion you might be having there just note down this point you will understand कोई एजम्पन नहीं है बेटा 
अरे इट्स अ रिप्रेजेंटेशन सो वी आर रिप्रेजेंटिंग द वेक्टर बी विद एन एरो लाइक दिस वो एरो को मैंने कहां बनाया उससे कोई मतलब ही नहीं आई कैन मेक 10 एरोस लाइक दिस बट दे विल ऑल रिप्रेजेंट बी ओनली एज लॉन्ग एज देयर लेंथ्स आर द सेम एंड दे आर ऑल पॉइंटिंग इन द सेम डायरेक्शन दे ऑल रिप्रेजेंट द सेम वेक्टर बी Yeah, whatever you have to tell, tell, tell me on the message. That's what the message is for. I don't know why you are so, you know, getting so hyper. No need to get hyper about anything. Whatever you want to tell about angle, angle is a very simple thing in geometry. If you're not understanding why these two angles are the same, I'll explain that to you. हाँ दैट दैट इज द इजियर वे ऑफ फाइंडिंग एंगल रिटी टू आंसर योर क्वेश्चन ठीक है ऐसा नहीं है कि हम ऐसे नहीं एंगल निकाल सकते हैं ना सो आई आई जस्ट एक्सप्लेन दैट पॉइंट विद अनदर थिंग तो सपोज आई एम जस्ट आर्बिट्रली गिवन दैट द वेक्टर ई इज लाइक दिस ठीक है एंड द वेक्टर बी इज सपोज डॉन समेर एंड इट इज लाइक दिस Now here also I can tell the angle between the two, but it's a little bit complicated. How to do it? We will have to extend A. You see that this is A's direction, and we will have to extend the line along with B, which B is acting. We will have to understand that this is the direction in which B is acting. This is B's direction. So this is A's direction. This is B's direction. Now you can see that this is the direction in which A is acting. and this is the direction which b is acting so the angle between them is this one so easier way of doing that is instead of you know extending the lines and all that just pick up these two vectors and draw them from a common origin so from this common point let's say i'm drawing the vector e i'm just picking up this vector and placing it here okay. and then likewise i'm picking up this vector this vector b this exact same vector i'm picking it up तो ये पूरे एरो को यहां से उठा के फिर आई एम ड्राइंग इट आई एम ड्राइंग इट फ्रॉम हियर विदाउट चेंजिंग एनीथिंग मैग्नीट्यूड और डायरेक्शन आई एम जस्ट ड्राइंग इट हियर सो दैट बिकम्स अ इजीयर वे ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग नाउ ओके दिस एंगल इज ठीक है यस यस दिस दोस टू एंगल्स आर सेम बिकॉज़ दे आर वर्टिकली ऑपोजिट सो नाउ यू हैव कम टू द पॉइंट दैट यू डिड नॉट अंडरस्टैंड ओके ऑल राइट फाइनली सो ये एंगल इसके बराबर क्यों है बिकॉज़ सी You have the x-axis, which is a line like this, okay. and the line along which B is acting, which is a line like this. Okay. So this angle is always equal to this angle, and why that is the case? Because you can see that this angle here is one eighty minus theta. Okay. So obviously this angle becomes now theta. Understood the page. Okay. That's okay. It's no trouble. You should keep asking till you understand each point. Okay. No trouble at all. Whatever you don't understand, please ask me. No problem. It's me. No. It doesn't matter. I can repeat it any number of times. What is important is that you have to understand the whole thing. Okay. Good. Okay. Now. Uh, Was it Driti? No, I think. Sorry, Driti. Driti, have you understood why it is? I mean, it's not compulsory that we have to draw both vectors from one place. You know, draw both. I can understand the angle the other way also, but it becomes easier if I do it this way. So, for example, in the previous diagram also, I could have found out the angle directly, but the chances of making mistake is lot more. Okay. So, when I draw one vector like this. one vector e was like this and one vector b was like this so in this diagram only i can find out the direction between them but for that what i have to do is i have to be very very careful about the arrow i have to understand ki a aisa act kar raha hai that is a's direction along this direction like this whereas b kaise act kar raha hai b aise act kar raha hai so i have to extend b's line over here and i have to understand that b's arrow 
is pointing like this it's pointing like this whatever so the direction between this arrow and this arrow the angle will be this so if, if naturally these two angles are 60 and 60 you can see that this angle here will become You know, so that's why I'm saying that especially in the beginning, if we are, if we find all this a little confusing, so it's a very simple solution hai, that any two vectors are given anywhere. It doesn't matter, A, B, C, any two vectors are given. Pick them up and draw them from a common origin. So isko utha ke se place it on this common origin. Pick up this vector and place it over here. And then it's very easy to understand what is angle. Yes, so that becomes a sort of go-to method you can do. That you know, you draw both the vectors, redraw them from a common origin point, or you know, join their tails. Draw them in such a way that they join the tails as well. So that becomes the easy way of calculating the angle. Now, next thing we'll understand is the first operation. Multiplication of a vector by a scalar. A very good example of this is the very famous equation f is equal to m. Now, here see in the right hand side what is happening mass into acceleration. Here m is mass, which is a scalar, and e is acceleration which is a vector and right hand side sorry left hand side is basically what force which is also a vector so what this shows us that when we multiply a vector with a scalar it gives us a vector only okay so this shows us that in general we can say that if we multiply so This shows that you can see that if a vector, let's see, E is multiplied by a scalar, let's say N, okay, then the product gives us a vector quantity. Then the product. is a vector. Okay. Now that vector has two important properties such that the vector V is along the vector V or you can say it has the same direction as V. And the magnitude of the vector V is n times the magnitude of the vector. So we'll understand some examples of this and this will become more clear. But first, just write down the definition of this operation. When we multiply a vector it gives us a vector quantity. So multiplying the acceleration with mass gives us a new vector quantity which is force. And always that vector quantity will be such that the, the quantity we are getting by multiplying with the scalar, it's a vector in the same direction. So force ka direction acceleration ke direction ke barabar hai. But force ka magnitude kitna ho jayega, it will become magnitude of mass, sorry, it will become mass into magnitude of acceleration. Okay. So this is the first instance of an algebraic operation that we are learning involving vector quantity. So that is when we multiply a vector with a scalar, this is how it looks like. This is how the operation looks like. So I've given you an example of an actual physics equation. Whereas you can say in general, it is like this, that you multiply any vector E with any scalar quantity N. So you get a new vector quantity, let's say B, which is N times vector E.
वर्क अलग है बेटा वर्क में क्या है ना वी ऑपरेट ऑन टू वेक्टर्स दैट इज फोर्स एंड डिस्प्लेसमेंट सो एट अ लेटर स्टेज वील सी दैट दैट्स अ डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ ऑपरेशन ओके यू माइट हैव सीन इन बुक्स दैट वर्क इज डिफाइंड एज फोर्स इज डॉट प्रोडक्ट विद डिस्प्लेसमेंट सो दैट एक्चुअली बिकम्स एफ इनटू एस इनटू कॉस थीटा वेयर थीटा इज द एंगल बिटवीन फोर्स एंड डिस्प्लेसमेंट सो वी गोइंग टू कम टू कम टू दैट ओके दिस विल बी द थर्ड टाइप ऑफ वेक्टर ऑपरेशन दैट वी स्टडी एंड इट इज कॉल्ड द डॉट प्रोडक्ट So remember, in work done, we are not relating a vector quantity with a scalar. We are actually relating a vector quantity with another vector quantity. That is force and displacement. ठीक है? So आपने जो definition पढ़ा है ना work का that it is force into displacement in the direction of force. So you'll see that that definition only is used to define something called dot product of two vectors. Okay? If you like, you can read about it also. It's there in your module. You'll understand part of it after today's lecture. But You might not understand 100% before we do some more analysis. Okay. Okay. Now this just one additional thing to understand over here. So this thing that I have written over here, this explanation that I have written, this is with an assumption. Okay, this is with an assumption that n is a positive quantity, but a scalar is not always positive. Okay, so this is assuming n is a positive scalar, okay. but keep in mind scalars can be negative also. Okay. For example, charge Q, electric charge. ये कैसा क्वांटिटी होता है स्केलर होता है बट क्यू कैन बी नेगेटिव और पॉजिटिव लाइक चार्ज ऑफ एन इलेक्ट्रॉन इज माइनस वन पॉइंट सिक्स इन टू टेन डेज पर माइनस नाइनटीन एटोमिक स्ट्रक्चर सो अ स्केलर क्वांटिटी कैन बी नेगेटिव और पॉजिटिव ऑल्सो सो दैट मेक्स अ डिफरेंस ओवर ओके सो अप टू दिस वॉट आई रिटर्न इज दैट इज अज्यूमिंग दैट एन इज पॉजिटिव बट एन कैन बी नेगेटिव ऑल्सो सो जस्ट make sure you note down this point and then we'll discuss more about this okay so as you're writing this example just make a note of this point Okay, so what happens if that charge, uh, sorry, if that quantity n is a negative quantity, then we will not say that b is along a. Okay, we will say something different. Okay, yeah. So I am coming to that point. Don't worry. Okay, so just right now, write down this only. That this this is assuming that n is positive. Now what happens when n is negative? I'll explain later. so let's generalize this okay so what we'll say is that if b is equal to n times a okay. now suppose if n is a negative quantity it's a scalar but it's a negative quantity then what happens is that b is opposite in direction to e okay and magnitude of the vector v is magnitude of n or mod of n into e whereas on the other hand what we already seen earlier if n is a positive quantity then magnitude of b is equal to just that positive number times or that positive scalar times magnitude of e and this direction is along so this is the complete thing okay, this is the complete definition because we have to take 
all possibilities. So there are two cases. Yes, then also we can see. So, but the, for example, in class 12, you will study an equation like this that force acting on a particle is equal to its charge multiplied by electric field. So, you'll see that if you put a proton in an electric field because it's positively charged, the direction of force is the same as the direction of the field. But if you put a negatively charged particle like an electron, then it experiences the force in the opposite direction. So yes, the negative sign of N actually indicates that it's in the opposite direction. So we'll do a question and you'll understand this. Okay, so first just write down this definition. Uh, there's just one more case also. Okay. And that's the exceptional case. If N is zero, then what happens? D becomes what is called a null vector. So a null vector is a vector of magnitude zero. So that's another definition for you. What is zero with a vector on top of it? That is called a null vector. So we can vector ko zero se multiply kar sakte hai. But if we multiply zero with a vector, it should give us a vector quantity. So that kind of vector quantity is called a null vector. So just make a note of this. Okay, people, so hope these points are clear so far. Okay. So now let's quickly work out an example. So F1 is a force of magnitude. 20 newtons okay, acting at 30 degrees north of east. Okay. F2 is equal to 0 0.5 F1 and F3 is equal to
yes, in short form, then we can write like that. But at the moment, I would say avoid that. So F3 is uh, minus 3 times F1. So taking this as north and east direction. So first part. Draw appropriate vector arrows to represent F1, F2, and F3, okay. and find the magnitude of F2 and magnitude of F3. Meaning, vector is not a negative quantity current. Vector has magnitude and direction. So, the relationship between vector F3 and F1 is that they are having a negative sign. That means, what is the direction opposite? Okay. Vector is not a negative quantity. Vector is a quantity which has magnitude and direction. Okay. But if I say that vector F3 is negative 3 times F1, that means the direction of F3 is becoming opposite to F1. That is the meaning of this. Yes, yes, that is correct. Sagar, that is correct. So, to do this question, all you have to do is apply the statement that we have just made before. Two minutes before the statement that we made, just apply it. When can the magnitude be zero? If I multiply it with zero, so if I say that you know there is a vector, let's say E, which is zero multiplied by F1. So what it means that the vector E is the null vector. That is the meaning. Okay. Or later we will see that if we subtract a vector from itself, yeah, it's it's for the rule only. Correct? Okay, so it's very simple. Don't have to do much in this question actually. You see that if this represents my east direction, and this represents my north direction. So this is obviously west and this is south. Now, what about the vector F1? It was 20 newtons along 30 degrees north of east. So, this It would be a vector which is something like this. Roughly, I am just saying roughly make a diagram. You don't need to make an exact scale with exact angle and all that. So no need to use a protractor or anything. So this is 20 newtons in magnitude. So its length is 20 newtons. Okay. Now if I am saying that F2 is equal to 0 0.5 times F1. Now see this is a positive number. So that means the magnitude of F2 is 0 0.5 times the magnitude of F1. So it is 0 0.5 into 20 or it is 10 newtons. And F2 is along F1. So along is the same thing as saying parallel. So that means I can represent F2 in the same diagram in many ways. I can represent it by drawing an arrow which is like this or I can represent it like this doesn't matter it's one and the same thing I can represent it here doesn't matter as long as all these arrows are in the same direction 
they are at 20 degrees and the length of this arrow should be half of this so again i have said roughly it's roughly half Ah, we can draw on this also. No problem. We can draw it on top of this also. So now, if I draw exactly on top, it will overlap, but it will look like this. You can draw it like this. Also. But its half length drawn like this. More like this. We can draw it this way also, but it just gets a little bit so, so we can draw it like this also. F1 is similar. Okay. F1 is at 30 degrees north of. East. So, F1 was given to me in the question. Na, so, this is my east direction and this is my north direction. Okay, so, this is east, this is north. So, which will be the line which is 30 degrees east of north? Uh, sorry, north of east. That will be this line. From east, I am going 30 degrees. So, this is the meaning of 30 degrees north. Of what it now? Yeah. So now in words, how we can say about F2? I can say that F2 is 10 newtons again at 30 degrees north of this. The same as same direction. As F1. Okay. So this is fully clear to all of you people. Correct. Ah, that's the same thing. So 30 degrees north of east is the same thing as 60 degrees east of north. One in the same. They express the same thing. This angle from 30 volume. Yeah, yeah, angle for 60 volume. It's one and the same. Okay. So Malvi guide was given in the question to us that the force F1 was acting in the direction 30 degrees north of east. So I have drawn the arrow along that line. And I have drawn the arrow proportional. I mean I'm assuming that this arrow is having a length which is proportional to 20 newtons. Now the information given about F2, the information given about F2 is that it's 0.5 times F1. So what that means is the magnitude is 0.5 to half. So 10 newtons. But 0.5 is a positive quantity. So the direction is parallel. And the same direction as F1. So therefore F2's arrow will head along the same direction. 30 degrees north of east. But F2's arrow will be half in length compared to F1. This is the meaning. Got it. And now in comparison, how will F3 look like? Okay. So F3 is given to me. F3 is minus 3 F1. So negative sign means direction is opposite. Okay. But also it means that the magnitude of F3 will be not minus 3 but 3 times because magnitude cannot be a negative quantity so it is mod of minus 3 which is 3 times F1 so it will become 60 newtons so F3 will be a force like this now F3 in the same diagram will become a force which is in opposite direction and it should look like an arrow which is 3 times in length much 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 longer Sixty newtons in comparison to F1, which was 20 newtons. Okay. So this angle will again be 30. Okay. So you can see that. Or this angle will be 60. Okay. So it's between south and west. Okay. Why in the opposite direction? Because negative sign. Now remember when we multiply a vector with a negative quantity, its direction opposite. When we multiply it with a positive quantity, its direction remains the same. Okay. 
So that is why now in words we can say that F3 is 60 newtons along the direction which is 30 degrees south of west. Okay. Or that's the same thing as 60 degrees west of sun. So this direction. This is south, this is west. So this is the direction. 30 degrees okay, south from west okay, or from south going towards west. So that is 60 degrees west of south. Okay, so this is the other same thing. Okay, now we understood the significance of the minus sign. Na? Minus sign means direction opposite. Only, na? So go the northeast ke taraf tha, ye southwest. Ke taraf ke but exactly at 180 degrees to each other. Ye, ye straight line. Na? So this total angle should be 180. So that's why this angle is 30. Okay, people. So with this, we've learned the first vector operation. And this brings us to a conclusion of our first lecture. Now, I'll be sending you a PDF copy of these whiteboard notes. So you can go through these examples and these definitions carefully from this. And also, you have your own lecture notes to rely on. And you also have the module uh, for vectors in which you can read a little bit ahead. Because next time we will be learning something called triangle law of vector addition. So, if you will learn more, so it will help you understanding more, uh, understand more easily when we are discussing in the lecture. Okay. Uh, no, for this lecture, I am not giving any homework. Your homework is only reading triangle law from the module. Next lecture onwards, you will be getting an assignment sheet uh, with, with every session. Okay. So, this week's homework is just make sure that you read today's lecture notes carefully. Understand each and every point. And if there is uh, any doubt, then discuss with me. And uh, also read from your module about triangle law vector addition. Okay, that's it. Thank you, people. All the best. In case of any doubts in between in the week, you can always uh, send me a message on my personal WhatsApp number. Okay, I'm there in your group. Okay, so just send me a WhatsApp number in case you have any doubt related to physics.